Get ready for another Ultimate Spider-Man issue without Ultimate Spider-Man. Instead, let's follow Ben Parker and J. Jonah Jameson as they chase down the story of the century. Is investigative journalism more exciting than a superhero battle? Let's find out in Ultimate Spider-Man number 10 from Marvel Comics. See you in three. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Ultimate Spider-Man number 10. Well, let me put it like this. This issue is one third good. Writer Jonathan Hickman crafts yet another Spider-Man-less story to focus entirely on Ben Parker and J. Jonah Jameson as they uncover who Wilson Fisk sold Stain Stark Industries to and why. I'm not sure why that's so interesting, but we do find out toward the end, but eh, eh, whatever. Through the first two-thirds, the comic is a tedious investigation, but once the seasoned journalists get too close to the truth, the drama ramps up. But don't expect any super heroics because there aren't any. Before we dig in, let's recap what happened last time. When last we left Peter Parker and Harry Osborn in Ultimate Spider-Man number 9, they subjected themselves to yet another suit upgrade thanks to the research of Otto Octavius. Peter's first present from Otto didn't quite fit the bill, it was sort of a very clunky looking iron spider suit. But the next design was a more traditional fabric suit and that worked better. The best friends put their new suits through the ringer when they were attacked by Black Cat Sr., who is the first member they encounter from the Ultimate Sinister Six. Meanwhile, MJ had to explain to J. Jonah and Ben Parker how marketing works, which was weird. Alright, that brings us to the current issue. In Ultimate Spider-Man number 10, we catch up with Ben Parker and J. Jonah Jameson as they take a road trip to a very exclusive posh golf course in Long Island. Why? Ben found out one of Wilson Fisk's top men, James Wesley, you should recognize that name if you're a Spider-Man fan, happens to be having lunch there on this fine fall day. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, wait, 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 wait. We're getting another Ben and J. Jonah issue focusing on the paper, which is the name of their new publication. Yeah, that's right. Were you expecting something else? I, I don't know why. Why do you want a comic called Ultimate Spider-Man to focus on Ultimate Spider-Man? Silly reader, this is Marvel we're talking about here. They don't give readers what they want. That's not the Marvel way. Okay, fine. Whatever. I'm being sarcastic, obviously. I'm being facetious. But yeah, this is just another Ultimate Spider-Man comic without Ultimate Spider-Man. Ben and J. Jonah interrupt Wesley's very expensive lunch to confront him about the sale of Stain Stark Industries because one of their reporters is writing a story about the implications of that sale. Wesley entertains the questions only until Wilson Fisk's name comes up, and then he signals security to escort the men out. Later, Ben and J. Jonah discuss the trail of shell companies leading the Stain Stark sale away from Fisk, and J. Jonah makes the connection that one of the shell companies is owned by Oscorp. Now up to this point, and to be fair, the story is probably authentic for an investigative journalist's day-to-day -day job, but it's as dry as unbuttered toast. We don't know why Ben and J. Jonah are on this trail, or what's so interesting about the Stain Stark industry sale, or why that sale matters to anybody. So Hickman continues to bluntly strain the reader's patience because they're being brought through this investigation that really doesn't seem particularly interesting or have any type of stakes that we can tell. Well, these are seasoned reporters and the trail is the trail, so they go where it leads. Ben and J. Jonah pay a visit to Gwen Stacy at Oscorp to ask about the purchase. Gwen is open to talking at first because she is an investor in the paper and she's a friend of a friend through MJ and, and other connections. But once the questions get sensitive, she throws the men out and threatens to pull the funding for the paper. Later, Ben enjoys dinner with the Parker family where he gets a private word of caution from MJ because Gwen let her know about the earlier meeting and MJ wants Ben to be careful. Again, you get a sequence of events, but Hickman is continuing to strain the reader's patience with a slow-paced, low-urgency series of conversations. All we know so far is that Ben is on to a story he thinks is big enough to risk the paper's funding. The dinner scene is the only time we get a glimpse of Peter Parker, who only has, in total, six sentences of dialogue. That's it. Mostly directed towards his kids during a rousing game of chess. I mean, if this is supposed to be thrilling, I, I don't know, I think I have a different definition than Hickman. The issue concludes with Ben and J. Jonah receiving a visit from Harry Osborne, who offers the seasoned newsman a choice and the appearance of a familiar name we've not seen yet in the Ultimate Universe. And that's it. That's the issue. It's all dialogue. It's all information dump. So let's talk about the positives and the negatives, starting with what's great about Ultimate Spider-Man number 10. The positives of this issue work on two levels. First, the path Ben and J. Jonah follow to root out the particulars of their story feels authentic and believable. 
If you've ever wondered what it's like to chase down leads because you're a journalist or a reporter of some type, it can be painstaking work. So you get that experience here in full. If you've ever wondered what it was like to be a newspaper person, this is as good a representation as any. On the second level, once Harry shows up to confront Ben and Jay Jonah, many of the blank spots, including the purpose of the article, the broader implications of its publication, and consequences for what's going on, falls into place to make their efforts worth it. In short, the implication of the published article is the big idea of this issue. And that really only happens right at the last third of the issue. All right, so let's talk about the negatives. First and foremost, if it wasn't obvious and 100% clear, it's not too much to expect that a Spider-Man comic, ultimate or otherwise, places focus on Spider-Man. So far, that's not been the case in this title. Hickman's habit of getting lost inside subplots and world building has become detrimental to the title because he doesn't feel the need to further the story through the main character's eyes. After 10 issues of setup and laying the foundation for the maker's return, which isn't going to happen for another year in real time, Hickman appears to be signaling that the objective of all Ultimate titles, this goes for X-Men and Black Panther and the main Ultimates title, is to just tread water until the maker shows up. That's a lot to ask. Further, the pacing of what little plot there is happening has as much pep as watching a documentary. This is a superhero comic. I, I, I don't know why I have to say that out loud, but it's true. This is a superhero comic. It's not a PBS documentary series. If Hickman intends to keep focus on things other than Spider-Man doing Spider-Man things, he could at least infuse some excitement and energy beyond the sparse crumbs that we're getting in one or two spots. Let's switch gears and talk about the art for a second. David Messina steps in temporarily for the glorious Marco Cicchetto, and in all fairness, there isn't one bit of loss in the quality. You can tell the difference in their styles, that's for sure, they're not exactly the same, but this issue has an amazing richness and character detail, and the facial acting and gestures are perfect. I'm not looking forward to losing Cicchetto anytime soon, but if he should move on, just in case, just putting it out there, Messina would be an excellent replacement. So final thoughts, what do we think about Ultimate Spider-Man number 10 from Marvel Comics? It's a slow, tedious ride-along with Ben and J. Jonah as they chase down a story with wide-reaching implications. Hickman is close to holding the record for the most number of Spider-Man issues without a Spider-Man in it. That said, the dramatic intensity picks up in the last act, so that's a positive, and guest artist David Messina does a fantastic job filling in for Marco Cicero. Therefore, Ultimate Spider-Man number 10 earns a 6 out of 10. The issue picks up towards the end, but this series is too slow and spends too much time on everything but Spider-Man to be a prestige comic. But what do you think? Do you love the constant world building that is in no hurry to get anywhere anytime soon? Leave a thumbs up if you do, and drop a comment below with which Ultimate title is the best so far. Is it this one? Is it Black Panther? Is it X-Men? Which one? Also, remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review, check out the variant covers and preview pages, and buy this comic to help support the channel. Your support is, of course, greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for joining, and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.